get started? Yeah, we actually can start on time this time. So who is interested in AI these days? All right, many of you, right? So our next speaker, Antlers and Andrew, is from Intel. Please join me, welcome them to talk about explore, exploit parallelism for AI workloads with WASM and OpenMP. Thank you. Hi, my name is Andrew. Um, I, I'm a software engineer at Intel. I'm here with uh, Aaron Dorney is not together with us, but he also worked on this project. And I'm here with Atanas Atanasov, also a software engineer at Intel. Yep. So today we're going to give you a little bit of an overview of some of the kinds of things that Intel does when it comes to WebAssembly. We're trying to optimize uh, WebAssembly for our hardware. Um, and today we're going to be talking about OpenMP. So that's a parallel framework. Uh, you, can, you can run parallel programs. Um, we're we're going to try to do that in WebAssembly, but why? Um, one of the reasons is OpenMP has a long history. Um, it's a, it's a well-known framework. It's quite complex. Um, we do know that there's edge computing use cases that do have a need for parallel execution. OpenMP could fill that. And it also sort of uh, tests WebAssembly as a, as a suitable target for par parallel programs. Also. It's a challenge, so let's see. Um, let's talk about threads in WebAssembly. We had some comments earlier about multi-threading in, in WebAssembly, and, and it is a challenge, right? It's still uh, early days when it comes to threads in WebAssembly, and, and what you have to do today is if you take a, some C code that, that uses pthreads, um, you'd have to either compile it with mscripten with a certain target, you know, generate your WebAssembly file, run it in a browser, or you could you know, generate a WebAssembly file with WASI SDK, um, different target, and then run it in a standalone engine like WASM time or Whammer or something like that. Um, that's, that's the path that we'll actually be using today, is the, is the second path through WASI SDK. But everything we're talking about here today also applies to Inscripten as well. I should note that uh, the story for threads and WebAssembly should get better in the future. The post-MVP threads proposal that we've been working on is now phase one in the core, uh, core WebAssembly specification. So more to come there. But this is using WASI threads, which is a proposal we did last year. Um, you want to talk about OpenMP? Yeah. So yeah, OpenMP has, as we call it, very long history in, in parallel programming, in, specifically in HPC. is very widely used there. And you see what is actually behind it. It's a fork join model. Uh, you have a piece of code uh, where, through some pragma statement, you can fork a group of threads working in parallel on a certain problem. And then when they're finished, you join them. Uh, they, they get synchronized, and you get a result. Um, they are used, using a shared memory architecture, uh, basically, on the same node. It's really on, on, on the same node, uh, the whole parallelization. We don't speak about distributed uh, multiple nodes. Next slide. Uh, yeah, so in, in terms of OpenMP, it's a framework uh, basically provided by a lot of the compilers already natively. If you think about Clang or, or GCC, those are compilers which support it just by adding a flag when compiling your code. And uh, yeah, so you have a bunch of features. Uh, basically, the main thing is a, a statement called parallel, just to spawn, to, to fork those threads. Then you can sh uh, control how to share the work between them. Um, and you have some primitives to do synchronization between the threads, um, barriers and locks and so on. But also you have very advanced functionalities to do more advanced math. Uh, which is nice for the machines, what we have today, like SIMD uh, instructions. Uh, and recently, there is also support for device offloading. <coughs> and yeah, that, that's uh, displayed on the right. It's quite simple, actually, to parallelize code with that uh, functionality. You need a pragma statement, and you write pragma OMP parallel. And this will fork threads, and they will work in parallel on the for loop below. Basically, each thread will work on a chunk of it. What's this top language here? The top block? The top one you see is a Fortran example, so very similar. Um, right, and uh, in terms of architecture, uh, in this work we looked on more on the big block on the left, uh, the OpenMP runtime, so we, which gives us the basic functionality 
uh, to, do, to run this kind of parallel fork join mechanism the, to do the synchronization, but we did not look into the targets um, kind of functionality of OpenMP, which is responsible for the offload. We are very interested on feedback if this will be of interest for the community. So, um, if we're going to compile the OpenMP runtime uh, to WebAssembly, we need to start with libompa. Uh, there's many parts to uh, OpenMP. The, the offload targets we just talked about, we're not going to touch that here. We're going to just talk, talk about the, the runtime itself, libompa. There has been previous work. Uh, there's a, a change set for LLVM that sort of did some of this. Uh, but in, in this project, we actually reworked that into a new PR, which you can see here. And you know, if, if you like this work, please give it a thumbs up so we can you know, get that reviewed. Um, it's not uh, immediately trivial to compile OpenMP to WebAssembly. Um, as we tried to do this, we ran into many kinds of problems. Compilation failures, we got claim to crash, and we even had deadlocks in the code that we emitted. All of those are bad things. So uh, let me talk through those problems real quick. One, the first one is compilation failures. So some of the, some of the APIs that OpenMP uses aren't available in WASI yet. For example, WASI threads doesn't expose pthread, you know, any, any way to exit a thread early, right? pthread exit, we don't know how to do that yet. You know, that'd have to be in a future version of the spec. So uh, in order to solve this, we need to conditionally compile uh, different parts of OpenMP to say, well, in this case, we're not gonna, we're not gonna call that API. Um, we found this in one of our examples, we use the, uh, the OMP critical pragma and we cr uh, claim crashed on us and we thought, oh no. What do we do now? So looking into a little bit further, we figured out that it's common symbols um, are not implemented for the WebAssembly backend of LVM. Okay, that's not as big of an issue. It's not a bug, it's just not unimplemented. And so what we did is instead of using uh, common symbols, we use external symbols. It's just different kinds of symbols inside the LVM, um, you know, ELF kind of stuff. If you're interested in more details, we can talk more later. Um, and then, you know, we, we finally compiled libompa. We had it. We like uh, compiled some examples. We thought, here we go. This is great. We ran it in WASM time, and we deadlocked. And so, that's a bummer. Uh, so what we had to do is troubleshoot that deadlock. And one of the ways we did it is uh, we we emitted we as logs we emitted every wait and notify pair uh, in the in the code. Uh, and by examining the logs, we figured out which weights and notifiers weren't matching up. Um, we realized, well, we need a stack trace to figure out at which point that's happening. And so uh, we proposed WASI backtrace. It's a way of sort of printing a, a stack trace at whatever point you are in the WebAssembly program. Um, and eventually we figured out, oh, it's just uh, var args. So the var arg, you know, need to be a, a pointer, pointer to the var arg list. Once we figured out that out, we got through those issues. And we could execute a simple program. If you take a look at this code on the right, um, it just prints hello world from each of the threads that uh, OpenMP spawns. And so we're using all the special OMP pragma stuff, but when we spawn it, um, you know, OpenMP takes it away, runs these WASI threads, it all works. Great in WASM time. Now I'm going to go over to our friend Aaron, and we're going to run his video, right? So let me know. Open MP in WASM. So here we have an example C program that just instantiates two square matrices of a given size with random numbers. And we have some functions here set up to multiply them. So the first function is just standard linear implementation of matrix multiplication, and we just uh, collect the time taken by the function. The second one, though, is using the OpenMP parallel pragma notation. So this is a threaded implementation. So we are going to run this program just with eight threads. And we're going to run it using a make file that just generates a WASM binary by setting a WASM32 WASI threads target and linking in a 
customized version of OpenMP. And so we're just going to run make, and it will then run the generated binary in WASM time. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, the linear program took about 14 seconds. Whereas the parallel implementation only took 1.7. Now we noticed with larger matrix sizes that there was a bit of a difference in performance uh, when compared with a standard native OpenMP program. We noticed as well that the uh, WASM uh, programs were quite cache bound and we came to the conclusion that we were missing out on certain cache optimizations. So we created another function to transpose one of the matrices to give us better cache performance. And we also used the OpenMP tile notation to create some memory blocks to also improve uh, cache hits. So I'm going to recompile with a larger matrix size. Now in the initial run, you can see that only about 0.7 seconds was shaved off of the execution time. Whereas with a larger matrix size, uh, the effect of cache performance becomes more apparent. So I'm just going to disable the linear function because that can take a few minutes to run. And as you can see, the parallel function took about 17.6 seconds, whereas the transposed blocked function only took 7.5. So something we're also going to take a quick look at is SIMD vectorization instructions. Uh, so we're going to enable those with some compiler flags, and we're going to decrease the matrix size again. Now, even the linear function here actually benefits from using SIMD instructions. Um, in the initial run, it takes about 14 seconds, whereas with SIMD enabled, it's reduced to about nine. Uh, you can also see that the performance of the two parallel functions is improved. Now, I'm going to disable the linear function again. Okay, we're back. All right, you want to take this? Yeah, so you saw the example for uh, matrix multiplication. So it was quite easy, actually, to get performance uh, out of matrix multiply. We thought it's a good proxy to a lot of workloads which have heavy compute, like in the AI space. If you think about uh, convolutional networks, they are doing multiplication with a convolutional filter. Um, so. Yeah, and uh, uh, this was our initial kind of look. And uh, so now some, some kind of uh, analysis uh, of, of the approach, what we did. So you see on the left, basically, the trivial uh, matrix multiplication, three nested loops, uh, like we, we know it from university or from, from, from school. Um, and then uh, a, uh, a parallel version with OpenMP, it doesn't change too much. You still have the three nested loops and you have this kind of pragma statements, pragma OMP parallel. You can define private variables, which uh, tells basically to the, to the application, those uh, I, J, K will be private for my threads. And then you have the shared A, B, C variables. Collapse is another nice kind of syntax from, from OpenMP where you can collapse loops and split the work. And uh, yeah, the, the main analysis here, we actually run into a memory bound problem if we write the code like that. And if we do the analysis actually uh, mathematically about the complexity of the code, it's actually, it should be a compute bound problem. So 
we are uh, leaving performance out, out on the table. And yeah, so one way to deal with that is actually uh, look at the machine architecture a little bit. Uh, so actually what happens is um, you are not using the cache correctly. And one technique you, how you can improve through that is blocking. And uh, in, in for matrix multiply that works very nice because uh, the blocked version of matrix multiply is, is equivalent. So we are just loading blocks of the matrix and doing the matrix multiply on the smaller problem. Um, right, the, you see that it gets a little bit nasty, so we will have five nested, uh, nested loops, uh, but we turn the problem to a cash pound, which is far better. We speak about orders of magnitude of hundreds faster. Uh, right, and then uh, if you are lazy, writing those four, five loops can be done a little bit easier with uh, OpenMP 5.1 which is actually supported automatically through our uh, kind of implementation. So you write OpenMP tile sizes, the, the thing what Aaron showed, and this allows you just to do this blocking very nicely with one line. <coughs> and here are some results why uh, this can make sense. Um, so it was very kind of synth synthetic <laughs> example with matrix multiplication, but you see Basically, if you do, uh, do these optimizations, use also vectorization, you can get something like 2000x performance improvement versus native, uh, versus uh, kind of trivially written matrix multiply. Uh, what happens with WASM? So we see there a little bit less. We can see 785x, which is still great. Uh, the difference is because of the vectorization. Uh, the matrix multiply vectorization uh, used by WASM is mapped to SSC uh, in the x86 architecture to 128 bits, and the architecture can support more. Uh, right, and uh, some, little, some numbers about uh, what we uh, win if we uh, look at the vectorization, 128 versus AVX 512. Basically, the code is 0 times 3x slower. And yeah, uh, for their, so basically the performance difference, what you see between a native uh, kind of execution with OpenMP of matrix multiply versus uh, the WASM SIMD execution is it's only because of the vectorization. So it, it looks quite good. If we have future vectorization capabilities with WASM, we can get more performance. And uh, to close our examples, uh, we looked a little bit to more complex stuff, conv convolutional wet networks, AI, it's quite uh, a kind of hot topic today. So there was a, a very nice small kind of uh, uh, academia-like application uh, from, from Berkeley University, which I took. And basically we uh, compiled that with WASM and applied Similar optimizations like we, we talked today. Uh, we applied the Pragma OMP, uh, we applied Pardo, we applied the SIMD vectorization, and, and so on. To, uh, and uh, first, uh, uh, some good news. Uh, if you used profiling tools in the past uh, with uh, your uh, favorite language, they actually work with WASM also very nicely, with WASM time. Uh, and we saw in that example that convolution is the most expensive layer in that uh, neural network. And, uh, and similarly to matrix multiply, it was actually memory bound. You see it on this picture where we, we have so-called roof line model of the machine. Uh, this is basically uh, how a certain kernel dependent on uh, the ratio between operations, math operations and memory access, uh, where does it fit uh, in the whole architecture? Is it limited by memory speed or is it li limited by compute? And more to the left means it's actually limited more by the memory and for the low. So, and yeah, to optimize it, we want to bring it up. And again, we do nasty for loops stuff. <laughs> uh, basically, we, we did Pragma OMP parallel around our batch uh, batch for loop, and we could do also loop unrolling, if you're familiar with that concept, can bring a lot of performance, basically simply our 
make the compiler uh, know that the, the loop can execute those two operations, save some compiler work in that, um, and then we can do the CMD uh, reduction in the inner loop, and this gave us roughly 14x performances we see on, or yeah, 13.46x in WASM case. Natively, we can do 40x with the application. Uh, the reason why we did not get the 40x uh, with, with the uh, WASM code was most probably due to memory layout, is we did not look too deep in how, how to um, align everything to uh, SSE and 128 bits. But still, 14x was a good, good kind of result. Okay, so what did we show here today? We compiled the OpenMP runtime uh, using the WASM32 WASI threads target. Uh, we were able to compile some examples. So this matrix multiplication kernel, we uh, used OpenMP to speed that up. And we also optimized this image classification kernel. Um, all that, uh, and we, we compared the native to the WebAssembly side using some SIMD in there as well to get some additional speed ups. So what we did not show is, you know, OpenMP has a vast array of features, um, like all the task parallels and stuff we didn't go into, all the libOMP target stuff, so that'd be like running it on a GPU. We didn't show any of that today. That's what he's referring to. If you're interested in that, come talk to us. We gotta figure that stuff out. And so I, I just wanna, you know, little disclaimer here. Uh, if you go and use this today, and you used one of the features that we didn't use, I don't know if it works, so you're on your own. <laughs> um, uh, another thing that we didn't really discuss today is OpenMP has like reduced data types, which can be used for you know, eking out even a little more performance, like this N8 and BS16 stuff. Those uh, data types aren't really available in WebAssembly yet, so we'll have to wait a while until we can use that. Um, Okay, so that's the end of our slide. I have a couple of things to say about this before we take questions. Our contact information is here if you want to contact us, and we would love to talk more about this stuff. If you're interested in this OpenMP stuff, um, take a look at the, the PR, give it a thumbs up or whatever, make some comments. And if you want to run the beginnings of what uh, Atanas was sort of explaining here today, go to this link, uh, and there's a make file that should be able to you know, guide you through getting this running on your machine. All right, thank you so much. That's our presentation. All right, questions? Okay. Obi-Wan Trinobi, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. It's hard, it's your question. <laughs> okay, so my question is about SIMD. Um, so the benchmark is against AVX 512 on native, which obviously, uh, you know, the, the gaps in WASM SIMD on 128-bit compared to that are well known. Um, my, my, I guess my top question would be, would relax SIMD help Maybe. this use case? Yeah. You know, I think what would really help is the flexible vectors proposal. Okay. Um, which is, I think, phase one, maybe trending towards phase two. And that would, be able, that would enable us to be able to use 512-bit SIMD. So I think that's the biggest thing to work on. Uh, I, I guess a slightly related question. Have you benchmarked on 256 at all, since that is kind of a we, we least common denominator? We did on native code, AVX2, basically, but natively. Yeah, you, you basically see 2x versus SSZ, at least matrix multiply, 3x if you go 512. And, and Makes sense. Thanks. Got a question. Um, uh, Andrew, you know, you worked on WASNN before this, and now you're, you know, which is um, a way to pull, um, you know, ML into um, WebAssembly, like through a host guest boundary. And now you're pioneering um, with the team here WebAssembly inside of, I'm sorry, AI inside of WebAssembly. Or do you have any thoughts on when you should use one, te one technique or another? Short answer would be, uh, if you're looking for portability, try to compile it all into WebAssembly, if you can. If you're looking for performance, jump outside of the sandbox. Um, that would be the short answer today. I mean, there's like nuance in that, but that's how I sort of and divide if, it. If data movement is exp expensive, also data, true, data yeah. copies, yeah. security. Other questions? 
right? Huge round of applause for these guys.